Saskatchewan Education Minister Jeremy Cockrell pictured here highlighting his colorful personality on the campaign trail. Unfortunately, his personality's color is brown. Anyways, he continues to be the worst education minister possibly in Saskatchewan's history. He hasn't even been in the role for six months and he's already overseen the most strikes in the history of the province, including new strikes on Thursday, as the STF has announced rotating strikes at a number of divisions. For a full list of affected schools, head to stf.sk.ca. But I want to talk about what Jeremy had to say in response. Because good old Jer Bear posted this. Myth. The STF did not ask for a 23.4% salary increase. Reality. And he posted this. So first of all, the lie about what we're asking for is different than his lie last week. Last week he said it was 23 and a half. But also, he's actually told on himself in a big way here. So the Saskatchewan government's offer for teachers is 3, 2, and 2% over three years. The STF are asking for 2% per year over four years plus CPI for each of those years. So Jeremy brought out the math. Because the CPI increase in 2022 was 6.6%, .6 in 2023 it was 4%. And the next two projected years are 2.5% and 2.3%. Which means that he is admitting his offer is well below inflation. Like He's claiming that over the last two years and the next two years, the CPI has increased by 15.4%. But he's only offering 7 So he's directly admitting that he's offering teachers a pay cut. I'm sorry, but asking for significant salary increases during an inflationary period is normal. Everybody's doing that. Of course, he's going to insist that no government contracts include CPI increases, which isn't true. Because you know whose contract includes a CPI increase? Jeremy's. All MLA salaries are indexed to the CPI. He's a liar, you see. He lies. Like how he insists that the government is still at the table. Sitting at the table with an insulting offer doesn't really count for much. So the teachers are going out on strike on Thursday. Again, we're gonna keep doing this until you change your approach, Jeremy. We're waiting on you, Jer Bear. Oh, you know things are going bad in Alberta. They've busted out the giant novelty scissors. And they aren't even opening anything. Seriously, they're all using them. Why? To commemorate red tape reduction! You see, they're patting themselves on the back because they're claiming that they saved businesses $2.75 billion and cut red tape by over 33%. And they're all saying it. Every MLA posted the same thing. Eagerly patting themselves on the back. What a great job they've done reducing red tape. Although if you go over to the website, you very quickly find out that this is entirely made up. That $2.75 billion number? There is no source. It is made up out of whole cloth. And when you look at what they call red tape reduction, half of it is just updating old regulations, which every government does anyways. But also, red tape reduction isn't unequivocally a good thing. Like how quickly we forget the mass E. coli outbreak at daycares that was directly caused by a lack of oversight. And a lack of oversight is a regular theme in Alberta government issues. They just do whatever they want, and then pat themselves in the back for deregulating markets. This is the flailing of a desperate government. They're working hard to deregulate things and innocent people are getting hurt. Every regulation was there for a reason, and failing to address the reasons why that regulation was there in the first place just creates further problems. Like seeing themselves patting themselves on the back for cutting red tape as the healthcare system collapses and shortly after a massive E. coli outbreak caused by a lack of oversight is a lot. But we gotta keep up the grift, folks. 2.75 billion, ask no follow-up questions. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau pictured here giving his big supervillain speech three quarters of the way through the movie. Prepare for the power of this fully operational national dental plan. I'm just kidding, it's not fully operational. Anyways, he is offering an important reminder of how he governs. You see, he brings forward ideas that sound good, and then, because he absolutely refuses to build out public services properly, they fall apart. It's happening right now. Specifically with the National Daycare Program. So the federal government made deals with each province for a national $10 a day childcare program. But in true Justin Trudeau fashion, it didn't actually build out public services. It just gave public money to private services and hoped that would fix everything. So what they did was start sending public funding to existing daycares and then forcing the existing daycares to cap their fees at $10 a day. The idea is that public funds would make up the shortfall. Act surprised, the public funds are not making up the shortfall. Weird how an underfunded program tends not to work. And the reason why is pretty simple. Most of these numbers were done before a major inflationary crisis. 
So there's just not enough to cover the cost of a bunch of these different daycares. And the government insists that they're fully committed to it, but they're not committed to fully funding it. And because it's coming up short, the provinces are now using it as a political tool against the government. Instead of, you know, picking up the funding slack like they probably should. Like, all of this could have been avoided if we just had public childcare providers. Like, why until kids turn five do they get sent to private daycares and then they go to public schools after that? What is stopping us from opening up public daycares? It would be cheaper than this because you could roll out economies of scale. It would be easier to maintain high standards because it would be publicly administrated, instead of just a bunch of piecemeal solutions. It's the Trudeau way, a good idea like subsidized childcare implemented in a way that doesn't work. It's the same as dental, it's the same as pharmacare. Same as SIBA. This is what he does. Good idea, bad execution. It's the Trudeau way. Canadian industry minister François-Philippe Champagne, pictured here in a truly magnificent photo from his Wikipedia article. No idea what's going on here. Seems legit, though. Anyways, do you remember a couple of months ago when he, along with the rest of the government, demanded that grocery companies reduce prices? Remember, they called them to Ottawa, they asked them real nicely, didn't apply any binding measures at all. Yeah, it turns out that didn't do anything. He's now quite disappointed. Certainly hope he isn't surprised. Don't worry though, he's got it under control. He's sending a letter. <laughs> that'll, that'll do it. Specifically, he's sending a letter to the competition commissioner. He's expressing his dissatisfaction. But of course, he's not actually doing anything. He could roll out tax measures or price caps, but he won't. He's just gonna express his disappointment. And don't forget that in October, Justin Trudeau specifically said that grocers would take measures soon. Soon is doing a lot of heavy lifting there. Like, if any of this was actually working, would Loblaws have tried to get rid of their 50% discounts on nearly expired items? Really? So the government's doing their standard plan, making it somebody else's problem. Handing off the whole thing to the competition commissioner. And just hoping he'll fix it. He won't, but you know. It's not really about solving the problem, it's about giving the illusion of solving the problem. Like, if Champagne and the rest of the Liberal government wanted to bring down grocery prices, they could, tomorrow. Implement price caps. Implement profit caps. Implement new taxes. They have options, they're just not doing any of them. Because they don't actually want prices to come down. They just want profits to go up. This person believes that if school boards could, they would fire 90% of the teachers immediately. Alright, well for starters, they can. But there are laws. You can't just fire people without cause. But also, anytime somebody brings forward this whole fire all the teachers stuff, I always have the same question. Who are you going to replace them with? Like, you fire all the teachers on Monday, sure. Then what? Like, folks like this always seem to believe that there's a secret army of teachers willing to do better work for less money and enforce their values. Where? Like, we already have a lot of trouble staffing positions, so if the board fires 90% of its staff, who's coming in? Like, who's your plan? Because they don't exist, and this is part of a larger issue. Why are some people obsessed with firing workers? Like, clearly you've never worked in HR. Do you have any idea how much work and cost there is to recruiting staff? It is a lot easier to go through disciplinary and training processes. It is almost always a better idea to train up and improve the existing employees, rather than just mass firings. This is a terrible plan. It always fascinates me how people say this. Don't like how things are in Canada? Just leave Canada. No. Not happening. Like, it fascinates me how much some people are bothered by efforts to make things better. Like, I want to make Canada a better place for everybody to live. So I point out the issues. Try to highlight what we could do instead. Then folks come in with this. Just don't like it? Leave. No. Why don't you? Every nation is simply an assembly of people. The lines on the map, those are imaginary. We made them up. They are groups of people working together to create societies. And that co-construction means that everybody gets a say. So when somebody doesn't adhere to your exact ideas saying that they should just leave, is really just insisting that you should be able to stomp your feet and get your way. I get what I want and if I don't, you have to leave. I'm taking my ball and going home. Etc, etc. Nah, I'm good. I'm gonna stay. Even if it's just to annoy you. One of my favorite things that happens on this site is when people do this. When they've got absolutely nothing, they go after the toque. The toque really bothers them. 
Like, apparently I'm trying to cash in on the major credibility boost you get from wearing a toque. It gives me credence. You want to know why I wear a toque? The true toque origin story? The very first time I sat down to film a TikTok, I felt kind of weird about how my hair looked that day. So I looked around and there was a toque sitting near me, so I threw it on. And it worked a lot better with the green screen than my hair did. So I just started wearing the toque. Then I was growing out my hair, so I was going through a bunch of weird phases, so I just kept wearing the toque. And now, every time I take off the toque, people on the internet absolutely freak out. You have hair? <laughs> yeah, this isn't a Tim Pool thing. I'm not hiding the fact that I'm bald. But also, if the most devastating burn you can come up with is this guy wears a hat, you might want to go back and workshop it a bit. I don't know, you can go after my personality. There's a lot there. This person's asking about the proposed electoral reforms that the Liberals and the NDP are bringing forward. They're very minor. They're just expanding access to voting. It's making voting day three days instead of one and improving access to mail-in voting. So this person said, So why aren't all parties involved in tri-he changes? Another socialist trick! Oh yeah, we gotcha. Real socialist trick. That deal that was publicly announced over two years ago. Really <laughs> slipping it right past you. But also, there's a reason why the Conservatives and Pierre Poilievre specifically aren't included in this process. Because they don't contribute anything. Conservatives don't really bring a lot to the table anymore other than no. Like, you tell me, what actual meaningful electoral policy reform do you think that Pierre Poilievre would bring forward in this context? How do you think he would work together with Justin Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh? He's known for his cooperation. It's his whole thing, real easygoing guy. Like, why would they invite somebody who does nothing but say no to the table? Why invite somebody who does nothing but undermine the process? There's no point. Which, which liberal views specifically? I, I would love to hear this. Which of my views do you find to be liberal? Let's go further. Define liberal. But I would love to hear this one. Because I'm not a liberal. Never have been. When I was younger, I was a conservative, and then I just, like, sprinted straight past liberalism. Socialism, baby! I have no interest in liberalism. I think it's just a slightly less useless form of conservatism. Very slightly. So if you're concerned about my liberal views, let me allay your concerns. They don't exist. Hope that helps. This person's calling me a soy boy. Because, of course. So, first off, in a few minutes I'm going to block them again. This is, I think, the third time I've blocked them? But they keep making new accounts to come over here and insult me because their life is a rich, full oyster. I'm sure they're deeply satisfied with their days. Usually people whose lives are going well pop onto the internet to make fake accounts to insult strangers. It's a sign things are going great. But also, the soy boy thing? It's about how there was a claim a while ago that soy lowered testosterone levels or increased estrogen levels. It wasn't really true. There's like the tiniest grain of truth in it. But... And so now for some reason, soy is an insult. Because I'm somehow not manly enough for this person. Okay, don't care. Why do you care about a stranger's testosterone? Like, why do you care about me at all? Because you keep making new accounts to tell me how you feel. Seems like you're a little fixated. Maybe it's time for a new hobby. I don't know, therapy? Oh my god, I really need people on this site to get over the fact that I play video games sometimes. Like, yeah, I stream video games on Twitch sometimes. I do it for fun. It's fun. Why does somebody else having fun bother you? What do you do for fun? Just walk across Legos? Like, come on, man. Like, run for prime minister instead of playing video games. Do a thing you hate instead of a thing you enjoy. No. I choose to live a life I enjoy. Why don't you? What's wrong with fun? Good lord, some people. If me playing video games on Twitch on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday nights bothers you, don't watch! It's not hard! Twitch.tv slash Steve underscore boots.